As you know, we can introduce natural units by setting the speed of light, Planck's constant and others to be equal to 1. By doing this, we create relationships between certain units and make our equations much more pretty to look at. But what if, after calculating for a long time, we want to check our results against an experiment? It's useful to know how to restore SI units to our equations. This is known as dimensional analysis. Let's do some examples. The relativistic energy momentum relation looks like this in natural units. E squared equals P squared plus M squared. If we were to perform an experiment and measure momentum and mass in order to get the energy, we would measure momentum in mass, length over time, and mass in, well, mass. But wait, we can't add this. This is like asking how much is one apple plus three bananas. Plus, it doesn't give us units of energy, which would be measured in joules, or mass, length, squared over time squared. The trick is to multiply all terms but one with a certain amount of c's and h bars. Let's do this. We get e squared equals p squared c to the alpha h bar to the beta plus m squared c to the gamma h bar to the delta. This yields an equation of units like this. Now we demand that the units on the left and right hand side of the equation match up. We compare exponents of mass, length and time which gives us equations in our four unknowns, three for each term. We multiply terms here, so that means adding exponents. This yields the following three equations for the first term and these for the second term. After solving these equations, we can restore SI units. Our next example is the sine function, sine of ex, where e is energy and x is a spatial coordinate. We'll perform the same steps as before. First, multiply by unknown powers of those constants that you previously set to 1. Second, write down the dimensions and demand equality. Note that the units within a function must drop out, so therefore we have a 1 that is no dimension on the left hand side. Third, write down a set of equations and solve them. Fourth, write down the result. Now we know how to restore SI units within equations where some constants were set to 1. It just takes some time to get comfortable with natural units, but it's absolutely worth it in the end. That's pretty much it for natural units. Thanks for watching and see you next time.